record. There you go. So I'm going to start by um, introducing myself as the co-host, and then Epi and Tarek will also join in, and then Mike Bailey. Um, so my name is Rochelle. I'm one of the partners of Aida Equity with my husband, Tarek. Uh, we, we, we've gone through this. We started our journey in July of two, uh, 2022, so just about five months ago. Um, but our journey actually started with single family real estate. We did the long-term rental thing and flipping. And now we are in multifamily and we are very excited to, to share this journey with you guys. So I'll have Tarek introduce himself and then Eric will, uh, Epi will follow. Hi guys, uh, my name is Tarek Aid. I'm the other part of Aid Equity and I'm a US Navy veteran. So as you notice, like my English is not my first language but I believe it's not an excuse. Like I've, I lived in Egypt for 29 years and then I traveled to the US, lived with my lovely wife and we started our journey, which is like confirm, like, uh, yeah, started in single family as she mentioned and uh, we found out the best way to, for financial uh, freedom is multifamily. And uh, we're so happy that we are, we have a great team like we have uh, Mike Bailey is like one of the legends and also we like surrounding uh, making sure that we're surrounded by these successful people that's how we're gonna hit it and yeah here we go awesome great um and so I'll just do a quick introduction myself my name is Epi Ludwig um, I'm mostly um, a tech entrepreneur. Um, I'm from New York. Uh, moved to Singapore about 10 years ago. Uh, so Singapore is my home. Uh, my wife is from Singapore. I, you know, New York, you always invest in real estate uh, up until like I, I came across Grant uh, four years ago. That changed everything for us in terms of mindset, the way how you approach real estate and how you approach uh, entrepreneurial sales marketing so we've been part of their teams in Cardone ventures and Cardone capital and so when i joined the um, summit for real estate last year i just made a commitment that i'm going to follow and just learn more and so my my goal is to kind of uh, focus on one or two markets in florida uh, this time around and focus on look and find the right deals and so this is a great idea when we connected with Rochelle during the, uh, the, the, the summit about a week ago, two weeks ago. Uh, it was a great idea just to start putting our faces in front of our name and just to be connected with each other because uh, the contacts are very important relationship. This is, a, this is a business relationship. And so just being connected with each other is very important. So I'm truly looking forward to hear from Mike and uh, doing a QA. and a Then we're going to do some really good connection later on. Once we, uh, once we hear from Mike and his presentation, and then uh, we can connect deeply in terms of the uh, intentions, what our intentions are for uh, being part of this group. So thank you all and uh, look forward to connect with everyone. Rochelle, up, up to you. All right, everybody. So I'm very excited to introduce Michael Bailey from Massive Capital. Um, not is he only a, like, a, an experienced syndicator, but he is a wonderful, very generous person as well. And you can tell he is willing to share all of his knowledge, his experience to everybody who comes to talk to him. Um, we first met him over at a, at a conference in Florida and ever since we've hit it off and now we're in partnership with him and just super excited for him to be on here to, to share all of his knowledge with everybody. So, one of the things that really resonated with us and especially you know like his journey from single family from seven single family homes in 2021 you guys now he has over 1600 units so that's in a year i don't do math very well but that is more than 10x to me am i right so i'll have you on here mike and let you take the floor thank you <clears throat> thanks rochelle and uh Tarek as well, and, and Epi, uh, thanks a lot. Can, and just let me do a check here. Can you hear me okay? I, I'm trying to use my phone for my audio and because uh, I was having a little trouble with the computer. Also, if you can let me share my screen in a bit, uh, I don't, I'll be sharing some things and I'll just do some introduction. 
first. Uh, great to be here. And it's awesome. I see a few, uh, few other people that uh, we're either partners with and already and uh, continuing to grow some partnerships. Out. So this is awesome. The, um, I was going to actually with uh, Epi is cool because I, my son was born in Singapore and we lived, lived in Asia for uh, about 10 years or so between Indonesia, Singapore and Malaysia. So I've, so I've, uh, my background is oil and gas. I spent 30 years in that collecting, you know, doing a W-2, collecting a pay and and at the end, you know, it was, it, it grew for me, but it didn't grow like, you know, like I would really want it, you know, it was a comfortable job, it, you know, it gave me opportunity to travel, but it didn't really give me the opportunity, you know, the growth, just as I stayed in that didn't show the growth on the, the balance sheet as much, you know, so I had a, you know, decent look like, okay, really great, you know, net worth, but, um, when I started looking into the multi, you know, a couple of years ago, you know, so actually I went to my first event was in uh, July of 21. I went to a Cardone event, a multifamily. I started looking a little bit before that, but that was my first event. And that was where I realized the, the value of both, you know, the being into a deal and, and I thought, okay, this is really, really awesome about how the multifamily and, you, you know, how it multiplies, obviously, you know, which obviously that multifamily piece of it <laughs> makes sense then. Uh, because, you know, what you can do with 100 units versus one unit is, you know, amazing and how the value can grow, the net worth can grow significantly. So just, you know... And, Everybody says not bragging, but I guess at the, at the end of the day, we're always bragging about something. But, um, you know, w what I like to share, though, is that what I got out of that is what I liked other people to get without having to take, you know, the time it took me, you know, 50 years or 55 years, that point of, of changing. So, you know, my net worth uh, actually has uh, seven x uh, in the last year and a half, uh, from when I started into the multifamily. So it's not just about the, you know, adding units and doing this, but it's just other ways that it, it's helping me grow my value, you know? So I, as Rochelle said, I actually went from seven units. I got, uh, I'm in 3,300 units now as a GP and an LP. So about 200 units a month. And, we are operating our massive capital and then some of my operating team members from a different group. Uh, we're operating 170 million of assets now that we've acquired in, in that 16 months as well. Uh, so about a little over you know, 10 million uh, of assets per month that we've added. So, so those are things that I just like people to know it's possible. You don't have to have a lot of money to start in this. It, it helps if you got some, but you don't have to have a lot. You know, some of our partners have less than others. And it's just how we all work together as a community is what really makes the difference. So, um, so that's <laughs> a and then I'm going to uh, share a little bit about our team. And then I, I realized because oh, you still have, can you let me share Rochelle or Tyre? Yes, I'll let you share. I'll make you a host here. Okay. Okay, there you go. Oh, wait, you need to the, use the massive capital one, not the- Oh, and then Mike Bailey. Gotcha. Yeah. Let's see. Then I'll have you uh, turn it to back to me later so um, I can manage who's ever coming in. Okay, but let's see. Um. Okay, there we go. For those just joining us, welcome to the Q&A and networking call with Mike Bailey. 
So he is going to share his screen. And here we go. OK. So I'm just actually going to do a quick introduction of Massive Capital. And I, we've actually got more people to start adding to this. Um, give me a second here. Um, but the, um, let's see. Oh, I'm admitting people as well. Sorry, Rochelle. I don't, let me see if I can make you back to host. Did you want to show the, the make in Georgia? Uh, not yet. I, and I was going to talk to that in a minute. Um, so do you see, you see just the team here real quick? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. I wanted to talk about, so the reason uh, for the make in Georgia, we'll, I'll share a little bit about it, but because it was a 506B, uh, I wanted to be careful on what we share and talk about it today, uh, as I don't have, I don't have yet necessarily a relationship with everyone uh, that's in this call today. And uh, so I wanted to be a little bit cautious on how we, we go through and talk about that as an offering versus where we are with some other stuff. So, um, and I, I guess I should ask, how much, do I have about 20 minutes here or so? Yeah, have um, more than 20 minutes, yeah. Huh? Yeah. You have more yeah. than 20 minutes, Mike. Okay, so I wanted, I'm gonna go through a few different things. I'm gonna talk about just some ideas about um, the investing as well. And I, but I also, the reason I wanted to share here about team is because the only reason I get to the point that I got to is through building teams and communities. And it, it came through, you know, helping others along the way, I believe, and others helping me. So that, that's the only reason I'm able to get to, I don't have 33 units by myself. I have 3,300 units and I grew my net worth because I work with a lot of people that, want the same thing that I want and that want to work with me. Uh, so generally, so our massive capital team is, is, is now Sanjay Schreier and myself as the principals, but we continue bringing in and we, there's some people we need to start adding onto the right side of here, but Jasmine uh, Salinas joined me about uh, March. So Jasmine, this is just some examples I want to share. Jasmine now, owns about 800 units herself, has grown her net worth as being part of our team and, and growing in that process. But, it, but that doesn't come with, hey, I just want to be on the team and I want to get these units, right? It has to be, I want to work with you. I mean, I'm going to do it and I'm going to dedicate myself. So we have as well, Candice, Ramiz, Baskar, and Maria now has joined us as director of podcasts and investor portals. And we also have, I believe, you know, we're going to be partnering with y'all, with Rochelle and Tarek on, on some new assets that we're acquiring. And, and my point of all that is that if you want to grow in this business, you really need to focus on your teams, teamwork, your network, and figure out, like, you guys made a connection with Epi, and this brought this opportunity that starts to grow something new um and you don't know well, we don't know what that may be today but as long as you keep going for things and doing those things they all will you know mature and come to light uh, i think angela is on the call today as well i saw and angela is now working with us and she angela is doing angela sport has accepted and she's coming in to work with us and she's doing a lot of our legal uh back end stuff um and I mentioned something in LinkedIn because she is like helping so many people, even if they don't see it, because she's working on stuff that is helping us to do more deals and bring more people into. Deals. So that's that's the one thing I wanted to share there. Um, and, you know, just a little bit about Massive Capital, we're, you know, working in multiple areas. So when we talk about partnerships, we're also working with people that may not be in Houston or Dallas or San Antonio, and we're partnering with people in Georgia, North Carolina, Denver, uh, looking at some stuff in Phoenix. It could be another location. So just for everyone to have an idea is like, 
look in markets that are close to you. And if you're ready to like take action and be part of that, think about how you can work with other teams. Um, how can I give you back? Uh, okay, I'll let them in. I, I how can you the other people, um, you know, grow in their, in their process? So that's part of what we, we would like to do as well. Um, and this is, this is quickly, you know, when you start to look and work with others, this is just an idea of what we do for partnering. Um, and we, we work along these five groupings of, of areas that people, you know, at some point, some part of the, their, um, value chain that they bring fits into one of these groups you know, and, and everybody gets, you know, they come in with a superpower. How do they going to do? So like I mentioned earlier, Angela's really helping us a lot in this contract to close legal docs like that process. Some people may go find a deal and join the team through finding the deal and underwriting it or helping on the contract piece. You know, some people actually may have a large balance sheet and could be a loan guarantor or have experience. My Other Mike, yeah. sorry to interrupt. Could you um turn off the the give subtitles a try um because they can't see the slide. Yes, please. Oh, you can. Yeah, the it's give subtitle a try. Oh, the orange one. Yeah, thank you. Turn on or off. There you go. Perfect. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, and you're not oh the same. Uh... Are you, so are you seeing the full screen? Oh no, you're not. Let me see, hold on. I apologize. All good. No, we actually see the whole thing now. Mm. You have a massive value to our partners. Uh, that's the slide that we're seeing. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, but I was trying to, just a second. Okay, there you can actually see it better, can't you? Yes. Yeah, it's fine. Okay, all right. The, uh, so, okay. So thank you, sorry about that. I appreciate you letting me know, Terry. Um, so anyway, I just was going through, you know, this is where the, um, no, I know what the problem was, okay. Okay, so the, the idea was then as well, you know, people can be part of the balance sheet, people, you know, so think about where your superpowers lie when you're starting to join a team and be part of an equity. You know, equity or bringing money to the deal and then finally you help operate the property and uh, you know can, can do that part as well i'm going to move this over um so those were the things i wanted to share about what it you know what like to, to be you know being part of a team and how that it was i was able to grow in that process um and then I'm just going to stop here for a second. So actually, I'd like to do, can we do some Q&A and then I'll talk about a couple of deals, we have, what that looks like. Yes, I'm going to reclaim host now, um, okay. if that's okay. So yeah, we'll if you just share rather than host or not. Uh, it's okay. Uh, I, I can just host and then, but I, ha I have your slides for the Macon, Georgia one. That's the only slide I have. Okay. Okay, here you go. All right, so you want to do um, Q&A now? So let's do, do you guys have any questions about what Mike has been saying? Yeah, just about 10 minutes about Q&A and there's, um, I guess I'm not sharing anymore. So I was sharing another uh, slide that was related to GP and LP investors. And, and the idea there was what I was looking at are some common mistakes, you know, that we make early on. And, and some of those common mistakes, you know, is, is you'll hear a lot of them, 
is about not vetting the team properly or getting into a team that you're, you know, not not knowing them well enough up early on uh, as to, you know, what's going to be their commitment, what's going to be their plans, how much time do they have available for doing things. Because the one thing I learned between being an LP and a GP is being a GP can become a very full-time job. It's not a, hey, I'm going to buy this property and it's just going to grow and add value for me. It's, a, it's going to be a lot of work that takes place when you become a general partner. It's not saying don't become a general partner, but I like people to realize it's not just, hey, let me go do this and, and I'm going to make money at it because it does take a lot of work. So, uh, yeah, let's open it up for about 10 minutes of questions if we could, Rochelle. Absolutely. Um, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start off. I know Tarek has some questions and Epi has some questions and I'm opening it up for everybody as well. Just click on the icon that says um, raise hand and I will get to you. So Mike, everybody's question is all the beginner investors always ask me, how do we join a team? I think that's um, a question that everybody has. So like, for example, if I'm a beginner investor, I would like to team up with you. How do I do that? Sorry, I'm adjusting in. Uh, yeah, so this is, uh, and I see one of my other partners here, which is big into the whole team uh, concept as well, Alex, you know, and our, our whole, you know, process goes through, you know, really think about when I was sharing that other slide, what are, what are your superpowers and what is your commitment and what do you want to do? And, you know, just if you have, it could be you have deals in your area and you approach the team and say, hey, I've been looking at these deals. I've underwritten the deal. And I, I think this is, you know, awesome. It's, it's unbelievable returns. I'd love to do this with you guys. And I've got time and I've got interest and I'm going to do this. You know, it's, it's really showing up and, and showing what you want to do and, and really demonstrating that intention, right? That's the one thing is I look for what is people's intention and how many times do they come and show up? Like, I think, you know, uh, I, I'm not as quick sometimes as to realize, like, in one conversation, sometimes I'll think somebody is, like, amazing. And then I'll find out, wow, they're, they're just, like, talking about a lot of stuff. And then I'll meet some others that we have a nice conversation, but I'm not sure. And then they just keep showing up. They keep showing up. They keep showing up. And you realize they're the ones that, that you want to be partnering with um, as you go forward. So it's it's really a lot about demonstrating your intentions, showing up over and over and over. Um, we have some calls that we do with Massive Capital on a weekly basis. And when we start to see people not participating or showing up for those calls, we start to cut them out of the and we'll move on to others because mm -hmm. taking up space for us. So keep showing up. Noted. All right. So, <laughs> um, you don't. Yeah. If, if people don't see it, you don't, right? I guess that's part of it. Totally agree. So, as a follow-up question to that, sorry, I'm going to get to you, Tarek. Um, uh, as a follow-up question on your slide, it says Massive Capital's mission is to create ten to twenty GPs a year, and I'm thinking, aren't you creating? Um, how do you call this? Aren't you creating competitors, Mike? Or, you know, like, I know this is this is a small space and it's like everybody can just do so many deals, but I'm just curious on, on what your thought process is on that. Yeah, I believe it's, uh, you know, I for us, our growth comes from growth of others. So the, um, you know, and if, if we're not, so when I look at, when we add somebody in to our team or we are helping someone become a GP, so we did some deals in Denver, Georgia, uh, some other uh, North Carolina with some, some partners and letting them get into their first deals. And the idea is that they will now grow in the, so there's two different ways. They'll grow in that area. And we want them to grow in like North Carolina so we can do more and bigger deals with them. So that that's one way. The other way I look at it is if if we're not growing, massive capital is not accelerating and, and growing enough to stay ahead of somebody. 
and we become their ceiling, then that's, you know, I want them to go have the, do what they want and how they want and how they can do it. We do not want to become somebody's ceiling and, uh, you know, and stop them from their own growth, right? You know, ideally, we're going to keep growing as fast as they are and ahead of them, you know, and um, that's so so we don't see we're not really concerned about the competition because if, if we're not going at, at hyper speed uh, ourselves, you know, which is our plan, uh, then we're not really, you know, getting to our mission. Thanks, Mike. All right, Thank you. I, I have lots of questions, but let's talk about the most important ones. So uh, as you always say, speed is action, right? This is your word. <laughs> so for somebody who just started and they doesn't, they have other experience and like with other jobs or something like that. And when we, when we tell them that we would like you to add value to our team, they would like, it's like my experience while was in engineering. When when I first like start to join teams that like I'm trying to add value, but I don't know where exactly I can add this value on. I don't know yet. So what? Uh, and then we figure it out later. But what what's your advice for the people who really doesn't know where where they can add, add value in the team? Yeah, it's um, so I'll, I'll be you know when you look back or for me, I look back, I didn't know where I was going to add value in my teams. And uh, I just had to start participating and doing and, uh, and just taking the action. And, and even I don't know today, like, if I until we work together, like with Rochelle and Tarek and, and others, until we work together, I don't know necessarily either. We all have an idea. And we have to start somewhere. And then we 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 continue to work that out. One of the things, though, is you know some of us, you know, there's there's some different masterminds, and there's some you know invest in yourself type of things with uh, whether it's like Cardone or Rod Cliff or Rod Sumrock or Massive Capital or Legends. You know, there's there's opportunities to invest into those type of things that will help you find that path, right? So working with others that are already doing it and investing in yourself to, to figure out what that is, it uh, makes is how I did that. Right. I invested, I joined a bunch of groups and just started participating and working with those groups, listening to mentors, taking advice, trying new things. So it's the only way to, to know is to do. Exactly. Sounds great. Thank you for the answer. And there's something else for that. It's like follow-up question as uh, the people who would like, you know, I'm not going to pay this 25 or 20K for like a mentor. I would like to invest it or like, I, I, I don't want to invest in myself. I can I just want a, a very like quick ink back, you know, for my income. Like I paid something. I want, I want to see it like physically with money. What's your opinion of this thing too? Yeah, I had, so I'll just share my experience more. You know, I went through probably that mindset for about 50 years or so. <laughs> uh, and, and it has to, it, it took me a minute to, to change that perspective to the, the, this investment that I made into these other groups. You know, I didn't know at the time that it, what it was going to be the return on that investment. The, the return for me was I was going to put myself in a place that gave me an opportunity to be with people that were doing what I wanted to do. So I did that. And, and I, all I can share is like what I went for. Right. So I made an investment initially in one group, you know, of 25,000 for a year, which was the 10 X. And, you know, when I look back, okay, it, it paid off, right? I didn't know at the time it was going to pay off. And it doesn't pay off unless you actually take action. So like if you pay, you go invest in a group, any of them, they're all going to suck unless you actually go and do what you are supposed to do and do the things that they do go for their meetings. You come to the, you know, the calls that they have, you read the, you know, go through their training manuals, you go through their training online stuff. 
Otherwise, yeah, I'm not going to get much value out of it. Thank you for that, Mike. Do you have any questions, Epi, or anybody on the on the on the webinar? Yeah, it's, uh, a great. It's all about actions that you take. Um, now, Mike, uh, you know you you have the background. Um, uh, you work for about twenty years. You're financial planning consultant. Uh, how did this role shape you prepare for what you took this this big run uh, getting these deals uh, was that a big help your your background uh actually so my so uh my background as engineering so i was a petroleum engineer uh even though i was i was I'm working in these the international locations um so the and i'll i'll talk about myself and then i'll talk about team right um so the biggest things from that i actually took from my work history was not necessarily the the actual skills that i had but it was the adaptability and the way to work with others so having worked in you know international countries um including uh you know north africa uh, so I was over neighbors to Tarek for a while uh, when I was in Libya and, uh, you know, in, in Europe and, and I've worked in Russia, you know, in South America, you know, the things that I got is adaptability and to fear, like everything has a solution. So everything I look at is what is the solution, not the problem. All right. There is a problem, but I just need to know how are we going to get the solution? So. Those are the things that I really applied. And then knowing that when I was in those countries, the only way I could survive as well was through support systems and networks. So the idea here then was, okay, I needed to be teaming up with people. So teamed up with some guys at Massive that are with Massive Capital now that have that huge financial experience and they, the, the way they do underwriting, you know, is you know, just uh, impressive. And it, so together as a team, we, we grow and learn together and, and we have each other to grow on. Thanks, Mike. Um, Abby, do you have another question? Um, I'm, I'm interested to hear about your Macon. Uh, you know, I, I, I lived in, in, in Macon a little bit. This was like over uh, 30 years ago. I'm interested to hear from your side more from that, but um, yeah, let's probably go with some other questions here. Do we have any questions in a, from a chat here or anyone raising the hand? Yes, Anthony has his, his hand raised. Go for it, Anthony. Hi, good afternoon, Mike. Um, yeah, I'm Anthony. Um, I, I'm also very new in, in this, uh, this whole game and I'm trying to get into it uh, for the same reasons I think uh, you described previously. Um, I have an additional challenge here with me and myself being in Europe, and I'm wondering if you have any uh, advice for me and how I could add value into a team. I mean, I can show up in Zoom meetings all day long, uh, but what I see as, as some sort of a problem is, is obviously the location. Uh, I'm, I'm not the boots on the ground. I'm, I'm struggling here. What, I, what can I do to be actually an, an added value that somebody else uh, may not do? Any advice? Yeah, yeah. And it's cool because <laughs> you actually have a few people here, Epi, as well, that's international and, and people that, you know, uh, we also have another partner um, working with us, uh, Ashley uh, Thompson, who's based over in uh, um, Portugal. And, you know, so it, it comes back to spending some time and figuring out it, those superpower pieces, you know, understanding, spending some time with the team, you know, initially talking about what are the areas. So if I went back to the, you know, to our sheet, you know, uh, and, and so many people work, you know, remotely now that there's opportunities to work on things that you don't have to be a boots on the ground for a lot of this, you know, one of the areas, I mean, asset management is an area that you don't, there's a bit of it that's boots on the ground, but you need people that can actually go through the numbers and understand the bookkeeping and the accounting and that can go through and help, 
you know, look at the, the distributions that are going to go to the partners, help with investor relations, set up calls to investors, uh, mm -hmm. set up, you know, things like that. So there's, there's so many opportunities that can be done that you don't actually have to be the boots on the ground uh, anymore. I mean, I, I did my first deals with uh, Alex and we never ever met until like four or five months after we did the deals. And, neither, right. and I don't think Alex even saw some of the properties uh, until after, you know, we had met and I, there was a property I still haven't seen that, that we are a part of that I've not even met. I've not been to the property yet. Gotcha. So basically you're saying um, it doesn't really matter then. It, it, with, with it should not being... matter. And there, there is yeah. no, like in today's world, there should be no obstacles to that. And, and it's just, you know, getting into having spending time. So the first thing I did, yep. the, the other first thing I did was I joined like every Zoom call that everybody had. I joined every, you know, um, I joined all the WhatsApp groups that, that are out there that people are doing. I joined the Facebook groups. I just immersed myself into everything. Multifamily, uh, you know, for that first three to six months until, you know, deals started coming. And then once the deals started coming, it was just like uh, a snowball trying to keep up with it then. All right, that's awesome. Appreciate that. Yeah, no problem. All right, Pilar has a question. Hi, yes. Hi, Mike. Thank you. Hi, Pilar. Um, hello. Okay, what um, uh, what if you have money abroad? Like if you want to tap family members to live, I'm Colombian. So I want to tap, I want to talk to a cousin of mine. How do you... How do you bring money abroad um, from abroad here to a deal? Say, you know, if he says yes, or how do you deal with partners like that when it comes to money and investments? Yeah, so there's a, there's a few ways. And, um, and I, I, rather than getting into the details, I'll, I'll just share some concepts. And then it's something that we can all, you know, we can follow up with. Actually, uh, it's a discussion Tarek and I've started having as well. And, and the, the guy I mentioned, Ashley Thompson, Ashley's bringing money in from some investors from China. And so each one is going to be different. So each country has their different rules on how they deal with uh, the relationship with the U.S. on, on the, the taxes and money side of things. You know, the primary thing is that people, you know, the there's there's different routes, but like, you know, the the. Simple one is either they or a partner or family member of them set up a, an account and an LLC in the US is like a simple process. And then they're able to fund through that. And, but they have to be able to set that up and then get an EIN and then set up a bank account and put the money into a bank account. So depending on where it's coming from and how it's doing, you know, I know some people from Mexico go through Canada through a, a different system there, and then they invest into the U.S. Uh, so there's, you know, a few different ways, but it all is really dependent on the country it's coming from. And, and we have to, we look at each one individually when we're doing that. But it is possible, and we're, we actually have some partners that are bringing Colombian money. Okay. Uh, especially with what's, you know, kind of going on there. So Right, uh, right. Uh, but yeah, so we can connect anyone that is going down that line, you know, we can help connect them into, uh, at least directionally, we can help along that. Got it. Okay. No, thank you. That's helpful. Uh, cause I wasn't sure how to approach, um, this particular family member. Um, and I know that I think he has us accounts in Miami cause he, his business, he travels a lot to Miami, but I wasn't sure how to do that and transfer that to this, to this area in particular. So, okay, maybe I'll follow up with Tarek. Yeah, later. and then it just depends whether, you know, they, they still need to be, have similar accreditation. So it depends whether they're investing in a 506B, which is a, you know, which is for uh, friends and family type account, like Macon, Georgia is a 506B. So you have to have a relationship with everyone 
that invests and that you present that to as an investment. Um, on a 506 C, then it needs to be accredited investors and, and they have to follow similar rules to be accredited as a US member would. Got it, okay. All right, think... well, let's get the Colombian money in here, okay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, Shirley has a question. You're up next, Shirley. Hi, Um. so the flip side of that, just real quick, are you guys planning to do investments abroad? Currently, no. Uh, currently, no. We're, we looked at setting up some funds abroad, but currently we're not looking at doing any investments abroad. So it's a matter of really where the money sits and where it comes from is more what we're looking at rather than actually taking money the other direction. Okay, thank you. And then yeah. my second question real quick is what's the pathway from LP to GP if let's say you don't necessarily um, have capital right then and there to put in? Is that even possible to join a GP team? It, yeah, it is. And that's, I think, where really it comes back to, to me um, being involved, spending time with these groups, people starting to see you, know you, um, participate. You know, we look for, so one of the things is we do look for people that have invested in themselves as part of our, uh, we have a couple slides that we share, which is, you know, when we want to partner with people, we want people that are part of another program, another mentorship, or part of our mentorship, it doesn't matter. And the, the idea is that they're, we're not there to teach and train everybody everything uh, as from going from an LP to a GP necessarily. So we want them to be investing in that through another pathway and then come to us and say, yeah, this is what I'm doing. This is what I want to do. This is where I want to go, you know, and, and figure it out then together as we go down that path. And the, and the ways to do that are similar to the ones I shared in uh, the slides, but it falls into some of those categories of those five categories. Um, and I, I can share those. I'll share some slides with Tarek and Rochelle after that they can send out to everybody that if you guys have their emails to send them uh, some things just about our partnershiping and stuff like that. Just some ideas for people to think about. Um, Thank you. Have their contact information. Yes, I'll, I'll be sending it out to everybody, including okay. the, the replay of this of this Zoom call. OK, cool. cool. Yeah, I'll share, so I'll share that with the. Uh, with you guys afterwards. Thank you. So we we'll, we have one more question, and then we'll go to the to the pitch deal um, that Mike's going to share with us. All right, Madison, you're up. Madison. Hey, sorry, we got we got a kind of kid going on. Um, hey, y'all, everybody. Uh, Rochelle, thanks for putting us on. Yay. Mike for being here. Uh, I've enjoyed your videos on Instagram. Madison Wade, I'm just getting into this. Uh, do you have any advice for someone like myself who is just starting out, really has a, a desire to get a GP position, um, but... Uh-oh. Uh-oh, I think we got cut off. Did I lose him or he lost himself, I think? <laughs> okay, I think he got disconnected. All right. Do you mind if we? Do okay, I think I got, I oh. think I got dropped. <laughs> Am I back? <laughs> okay. Sorry about that. Uh, so uh, yeah, my question was, uh, you know, if there was someone like myself who doesn't really have capital but wants to be in on a GDP table and is really dedicated, um, what one skill set would you say would be uh, most advantageous to invest myself in learning so that I could bring to the team? Uh, my superpower is. I'm a stay-at-home dad. I have all the time and also none of the time. So what skill set should I focus on um, to really bring value to a GP table? Yeah. So one of, the, one of the things I try to encourage a lot of people initially is don't try to build new skill sets uh, initially and, and learn them as you start to participate. Because if I, if I went and tried to learn and some new skill sets, it just is going to put me directionally backwards from where I want to go. And so I focus on what are some skill sets I have that I can go forward with right now. 
Uh, somebody, you know, if somebody's got more time, they're stay home dad, or, you know, has the, the ability to do things like making a lot of phone calls, you know, one of them is being a, an investor relations person up front, you know, calling people for your team to, to help them, you know, bring new investors into a deal, uh, or just, you know, growing your network is, is one of the biggest skills that I didn't have. And it, it's been amazing for me uh, just being able to, to see how my network has grown uh, and the people that I've been able to, to have relationships with now. So that, that's the two things I would um, uh, say, you know, is don't try to build something new, use what you've got, and then just start spending time either, you know, where you're mentoring with or in a team to learn what is that, that their gaps are and where you can fill in those gaps. To piggyback on Thank that, you, Mike. there are a lot of people who I will speak with and they, they'll say, I don't know what I can give. I don't know what, what value I can bring. And then I talk to them and they're like, oh, I have all the time. I, have, I can do this and I can do that. And I said, there you go. That's, that's what you can bring to people. So um, just have an open mind and don't i promise you there is one thing that you can do that somebody oh. needs it might you you know it might take time for you to find a person who needs the the skill that you have but i, I promise you there's somebody out there okay and there's something yeah. also i'd like to share alex uh, lovely uh, was talking to us and he said try to write, try it down your resources and if you think that you don't have any resources you're wrong because at least you have time or at least you have, you have many things, you have your family, you have anything. So just make it a homework for tonight to write down how many resources that you have. Yeah, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. And, uh, and the other piece like we is, uh, you can go ahead to the side deck if you want, Rochelle, and uh, we can talk about it. It's not going to be a real pitch pitch because of kind of the situation, but we'll talk through the, the, the property a bit. The, the other thing is we, we don't look for people's help. We look for your commitment. So I don't need people's help. Oh, that's interesting. You're on the same slide I was just looking at. So <laughs> that's a good start. Okay. Um, so we don't look for people's help. We look for your commitment. And that's the other, like, as long as you're committed and you're going to do something and get involved, uh, it'll happen. You just got to just show up and do it. So um, so this, this property is actually a, it's, it's a, called a portfolio because it's two separate um, apartment complexes in Macon, Georgia, 174 units total. Uh, you see the names there, Windy Hill and Vineville. The, um, we, we actually have closed on this property earlier this year and, and it's, it's operational now. So, uh, so I'll say that in, in re respect to uh, this is not a direct pitch to raise capital for this. Uh, if you have a relationship with Terry or Rochelle and you want to talk about placing some money, um, connect with them and then we can follow up. But we'll just talk about the property itself. And um, if you want to go ahead, Rochelle, I'm not sure which because we have a couple presentations, but. Um, this is good to start with, though, you know, uh, when people are looking at, you know, the deals, you know, when you you present something, it's nice to just have a quick, real quick executive summary. Right. So this is what this tries to accomplish here. So this property returns is the plan. So you have a business plan when you do the underwriting. And this one would be returning around, you know, two times your money. So, so somebody put in you know, $100,000, their return over the, you know, five to six year business plan would be double that, um, basically. So 100,000 and six, five, six years later, you return, you walk away with a total of 200,000, your 100 plus another 100. And the good thing is that it's, it's tax deferred the whole way. So you, you're getting, you're getting a negative return, typically, that, comes to the IRS, which is called your K-1. And because of this year's last year of 100% of cost segregate or cost accelerated depreciation, 
that you can take this year, the uh, you you'll get you know a negative K one, which shows maybe you know with a hundred thousand investment, you're probably going to have maybe a negative seventy thousand dollars on that return. So, oh, sorry, uh, oh, you lost me. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> and uh, so, and this one is just uh, you know some. I don't know how you know advanced new or where people are, so I'll just talk about some nuances of this. So a 70-30 split you see here mm -hmm. is that means that 70% uh, of the of the uh, returns goes to the limited partners, which are the investors, uh, which is the passive income investors, and 30% of the overall return goes to the general partners which are the, the ones doing the sweat equity on this. This one had a 8% preferred return. So that preferred return means, it doesn't mean you're guaranteed to get paid 8%. It just means you get paid 8% before anyone else gets any returns on the deal. So nobody will, you know, none of the general partners get paid anything until the limited partners or the passive investors get their 8% preferred. And if it doesn't get paid in the first year, it gets accrued. So you, you know, whenever you invest, that gets accrued. Like if it's only 6% the first year, then you would get eight plus two the second year. So you would end up getting 10% uh, is how that works. So, okay. You wanna go ahead, Rochelle? I think that covered a lot on this slide. Um, you know, this one, it was a very low basis. Uh, if you see there, they talk about the basis, meaning how much did you pay? So we came into this deal at 67,000 a door, uh, which was really a great price even. You know, we're kind of in the middle of finishing, you know, the things were starting to change, interest rates were coming up, but, um, you know, we were able to get into this. It was, it was somewhat of an off-market deal because the, the people that, that found this deal originally already had a property in that area between Macon and Warner Robins, and they had some relationships, so they were able to get into this at a really good uh, price uh, on that. So, um, and there's, you know, it's, um, again, generally these type of properties, you know, this is a class C property, it's not, you know, it's, it's, these are generally recession prep, uh, proof type of, of properties as well, because people are limited now to buying a new house and they're going to have to go, you know, and, and rent and continue to rent. So the rent growth uh, there around Macon and around Warner Robins, uh, the total rent, I believe, is like in the high 90s. Of, of occupancy. So it's really low of vacancy in the whole area, which, which gives us comfort in, in kind of understanding, you know, the, the whole area is saturated right now. So, or undersaturated, I mean, it's, it's saturated with the meaning that you have a lot more people needing places than you have property or places for people to live. Okay. Go ahead, right. Michelle. Yeah. So for everybody, um, we are sharing this because a lot of newer investors ask the question, how do we know if it's a, a good deal? You know, they come across a, a property that they would like to look into, like they would like to start underwriting um, and they just don't know if it's something worth looking into. So like this one, as Mike had mentioned, it's 67, uh, sorry, yeah, 67K per door, which is low in that area. Is that right, Mike? Yes, I mean that's definitely low in that area. I mean the 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 average in that for the class C in that area is is going to be around uh, eighty to ninety thousand a door. So this was a really good initial price to get in on that. Yeah. And, and again, yeah, the reason I'm kind of sharing this different than as a strong pitch is just to share some of the fundamentals of how we or what the some of the things mean in this deck. Mm -hmm. as well as what the investment is so yeah go ahead to the next actually that's, that is the only that's ah. the, yeah so i only have three slides okay okay 
Yeah, so there's some other slides in a typical, you know, pitch deck that has kind of population of the area. Uh, it has, you know, th this is more, I believe, what I would call the executive summary deck, mm -hmm. which really gives people like, hey, are you interested or not interested in having a follow up? Like, you don't need to send 50 to 60 slides to somebody to see if they're interested in investing. Um, and it, and I have some partners that still want to do that. And I have to like, come on guys, let's just get to the point. And the, a one pager even is, is a great way to start. Just a one pager that says, Hey, this is the, the deal we have. This is how much it makes this is how big it is. And, uh, the, uh, you know, the, it just, you want to really help get people's attention and, and not get into it. My partners are a lot of engineers as well. And, uh, they like to just go into every detail about everything. And it's like, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Agreed. Sometimes too much information is, is bad. Okay. So, so just as uh, some information on that property though, as well, we had, like I said, we have been operating. Um, I don't remember the exact numbers. Alex actually may he's joined some or Angela as part of Angela and Alex are partners in this as well. And uh, Angela sits in asset management calls uh, on a regular basis. I've I've kind of moved on from the asset management calls to, to the next deals uh, as we go forward. But it is operating, and I know some of the rents now, like the pro forma rents, are are or the rents we're getting are above what we had for the pro forma for some of this. So you know it, that's um, so there's it's already on the positive side of things. And not to not to uh, say that you are you know like trying to raise capital for this, but I just like to know for my own information. Even if you're closed, are you still taking in investors? Yeah. So let me just share a little bit about that concept and process a little bit, uh, or as well is. So we have um, sometime we've we've actually had a few properties that have closed, and we. We, we partner sometimes with other people on these deals and they um, we're, we all commit to like, okay, we're going to bring so much money. You're going to bring so much money to it. And uh, sometimes the, the other partners maybe don't perform on their part of that. So um, they're, they're great at operating, but they maybe didn't bring all the equity they were supposed to. So then other the other partner can bring some more money or equity into it and actually get more ownership potentially of, of the, the overall GP in that way. Uh, so, so we are helping out on this one too uh, with our partner. So a lot of times you'll close, you can close because the banks are gonna force you to close and you will either the GP team has enough money to bring into it to close the deal. Mm -hmm. And then you do what you call is uh, raise out or, or backfill the, the people that put the money into the deal to get it to close. And then you want to raise enough more money to actually be able to do the capital work that you plan to do. And you also want to then have enough more money you typically raise to have a reserve, operating reserve that you have. So you'll have a raise, the raise covers the CapEx, it'll cover the operating reserves, it should cover the acquisition fees that you pay out to the general partners. And, and then they, you're basically operational. Mm -hmm. So, so the, this one, this one, and, and the, there's another one we closed as well recently called McCallum. And we had like 30 days to close it. And we actually had to bring in some borrow and bring in some money. Uh, from GPs to close that deal, it, it needed nine million to close. So we closed it. It's a, it's a, another one, and uh, it's like four hundred units. But the reason we did that was if we didn't close in that time frame, we would lose the the savings we were getting. So we we got like uh, seven million dollars off of the price by closing in thirty days. So sometimes you have to find ways to do things. And, uh, and then solve afterwards. And that's why I always say, we wanna figure the solutions, not the problems. Because once you know that there's a solution, that uh, you're gonna be able to do a lot more deals. Yeah, 
That's right. So um, I'm already getting messages about you know people interested in this deal. So please reach out to me if you would like to know more about the Macon Georgia deal. Um, reach out to me or Tarek. Uh, send me a message. You, most of you have my phone number. So any questions about the deal? So Mike had showed us how to pitch a deal in summary, basically have a, an executive deck just to kind of show. Sort of. <laughs> what was that? I said sort of. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, um, so have an executive deck to show, just to kind of feel what the interest is and then going, going deeper once they've you've established relationship and they you know for sure that they would like to invest in that sort of in that property so thank hey, you so much for that mike can, yeah can we let me see i'll share also so if people want to see this or other uh deals that are in our portfolio um i'll share our current um uh, investor portal in our um, website that people can look at because It'll have this deal um, and depending, it may have some future um, deals as well that, that like we're partnering in. Um, so I'll okay. share that in the chat here. Just saying, sorry. Okay. All right, so Michael, share this. do you guys have any questions about how to pitch a deal, how how to find deals, how, how to determine whether it's a, it's a good one or not? Um, anybody? You can raise your hand or just chime in. Also, Miriam had a question. Is Miriam here? Yep. Hi, guys. How are you? I'm sorry. I'm driving now. <laughs> Hi, Mike. How are you? Hey, Miriam. Nice to see you. Uh, nice to see you, too. And here is my bedroom. Mike there. Um, uh, my question was for Mr. Mike. Um, is because my bedroom is studying and I, am, uh, I want to be part of this great community and doing big things, but he's just able to do it over the summer when he has vacation. Um, and I don't know how to help him. And since Mr. Mike has a, a son too, and I think he's almost Pedro's age, uh, I wanted to know what idea he can give it to me so, so my Pedro can be part of that uh, one deal or so. Um, I want to put money in that, but I wanted to make sure that Pedro be part of something to he learn more. Uh, that's what I wanted to do it, but I am not sure how to do it. I need ideas. <laughs> Okay, and I know uh, we've had some discussions with um, kind of with you and Pedro as well. And I think for anyone else with teens or, or kids, you know, it's um, you, what Miriam has done and what I've tried to do with my son and, and I see others is exposing them to the opportunity, right? So if, even if I wasn't the one bringing them to an event or going to an event with them, that they can meet other people that are doing this and and eventually make the relationship uh, for that. Um, it still comes into them having or taking enough time. And, uh, you know, I, I'll use, I, I actually saw so use a positive and negative. My son Kyle is uh, 16 and Kyle loves the business, but his time and, and commitment to it right now is not um, where it wants to, or where it, probably needs to be to grow so it really comes into the you know and then uh, we have another guy Nick that works with Alex and he spends a lot of time doing this so it, it really comes back Miriam into like uh, it does have a little bit to do with how much time they can afford and, and spend and just get involved and keep connected with our communities and joining our our groups and things like that one of the things I will find the information, Tim Mai, one of our partners as well, Tim is doing a teen millionaire challenge where he's letting teens participate or they sign up and they get a chance to go through a training program to learn about multifamily investing and to do a deal together. So he had some teens that participated in this last year. They bought a property together uh, as the teens. So that's another uh, opportunity. I'll, I'll find the information and uh, 
uh, share that over with you or connect you with Tim at least in that process. Thank you so much. That will be also so nice. Yeah, like basically, uh, Pedro has more time uh, during the summer. It will be full commit during the summer, but during the school periods are a little bit tough because he's a lot of things. But thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yeah, no, thank you. And uh, I think it's like, you know, and I know he keeps connected with uh, some of the stuff. We're, we're still, as we all grow these right now, I know the there's the team call team call on monday nights um i think there's you know continuing to do that so um you know the the connection will be the biggest thing for him right now i believe being connected and even if it takes a you know until the summertime that as long as he can keep connected as much as possible joining some calls yeah. um joining you know doing some this summer my son actually so i've given my son some he, during the summers, he goes and works on the properties. He's, uh, Kyle actually goes and runs lines and uh, puts up sheetrock and things like that during his summer breaks. That's great. That's nice. Uh, yeah, Pedro has Monday uh, Boys and Girls. He's going to be soon an eagle and he is part of a group uh, to the main, uh, main people uh, to do it so he can uh, miss it. Uh, but uh, I hope during the summer, like with time, sometimes he gets frustrated because uh, he doesn't have no time and he really loves what he does. But like, but uh, little by little. <laughs> yeah. yeah. For those who have kids, um, just like Miriam, get your kids involved in this and you guys can learn together. Have the And then also I'm sure um, if you ask your CPA, there is a way to get tax benefits from that when you have your, your child or your children involved in your business. So exactly. ask your CPA. And yeah. also 100 percent. Yeah, yeah, Mike, I have a challenge. Like I'm traveling to Egypt tomorrow and I'm facing 11 nephew and nieces. And I'm trying to <laughs> change their mentality instead of engineering and being a doctor to have a like uh, in real estate and financial dream uh, that freedom. So yeah, that's that's, that's awesome. Good sure. luck. Thank you so much. You. I love this community uh, and everything. Uh, all the uh, all you guys are sharing are so nice. Thank you so much. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, Miriam. All right. Thank you, guys. So we are at the hour mark. Uh, I would like to move on to networking. If you guys don't have any more questions for Mike, um, bring them up or forever hold your peace. No, I'm kidding. We, we will have a lot of more webinars and Q&As and everything. So, so, all right. So what I've noticed in other Zoom calls, you know, the moment we say we're going to go on breakout groups, people just drop out like flies and they just disappear. So we're going to do it a little differently. Um, this is a safe space. I know a lot of people have fear, you know, like have public speaking fear. So I'm going to put out this challenge. Um, so what we're going to do instead of going out on breakout groups, we're going to do it as a, as a team, as a whole group, and we're going to introduce ourselves, our, uh, our market. And this is a good way also to get in front of Mike and tell him what you, the, the skills that you have. So that is a challenge for everybody. Um, so the way we're going to do this, raise your hand. I don't want to force anybody who doesn't want to do this either. So raise your hand if you want to participate. Um, on, on the icon that says reactions, you're gonna put up your raise hand gesture. Raise hand, is it? Yeah, and before we before we just start, just be intentional. Uh, what markets you you're interested on, and uh, so that way we can match with each other. This is a whole opportunity for us to connect and be in highly intentional. So. Yeah. All right. So again, your name the market that you're interested in. Um, what else did we want to be on there? Where are you from? Where you're from. And perhaps maybe include your why. Why do you want to do this? Is it for financial freedom? You want to retire early? You want to quit your W-2? Um, and then uh, just spit out like what kind of skills do you have? Maybe are you good in underwriting? You love math? You sleep, eat numbers? Uh, so put it out there, or you're good with investor relations, you like talking to people, that's your jam, so throw it out there, okay? And um, put your video on if you can, please, so we can see your faces. 
All right, fantastic. So I'm gonna just call out your name. Go ahead, Jolene. I'm gonna unmute you. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. I apologize for not being on camera. I was explaining that I am recovering from uh, a delicate procedure earlier this week. So I promise that going forward, I will have my camera on and I'll be delighted to, to share my to share myself visibly with you all. I'm from the Phoenix market. I live in a suburb of Phoenix, Arizona called Gilbert. I am very interested in the market here. I, I myself have had great personal success with my personal residences over the last 10 years. I've probably made mm, close to a million dollars just on flipping my houses by owning them, living in them and selling them and just walking away with the equity. And so, I'm excited about this market. I think California is moving in and things are, our prices are, are, are crazy, but it's still a really, really market to be tapped into. I'm also interested in Texas, Florida, and Georgia. Uh, I am here. Um, I work for a large healthcare organization in a, a C-suite a C position for a few years and prior to that kind of worked my way up. I was injured over the summer and kind of marginalized um, in that process and, and, and being forced out because I'm not ready to return. So I've been looking for ways to scale my own private business and I've always loved real estate and I've had really good success personally. And so I, I just asked myself, why not jump in and see how far I can go? That's amazing, Jolene. All right, so Jolene is your girl. If you're looking to invest in Arizona, she's also looking uh, at investments in Texas, Florida, and Georgia. Is that right? That is correct. All right, and she has the healthcare people locked down. So if you want to tap into the healthcare market, you want them as investors, holler up, okay? Thank you. All right, Anthony, you're up next. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm not sure if you can see me. We have your name up, but I saw you on another screen. Yeah, so I'm having the video with my, my phone and uh, the whole deal with, with the audio on the computer. <laughs> so my name is Anthony Huber. Um, I am from Europe and Holland. Uh, so I'm a bit further away from most of you, uh, different time zone, obviously. Um, I'm looking to get into the real estate in the US because over here in Holland is definitely not landlord friendly. Um, it's a pain to get uh, non-paying renters out. So this is one of the reasons for me to get into the US, although that might uh, come with some struggles. I think it's definitely worth it. Um, I am during the day into uh, IT. That's what I do. Um, I manage a small team. Um, we build some, some cool systems. And um, yeah, the reason for me to get into real estate is uh, basically all the reasons you mentioned uh, previously is uh, I want some financial freedom, um, have some, yeah, maybe retire early. It's not that I'm sick of working, obviously, but um, yeah, just some freedom, you know, um, things are, are going crazy these days. Uh, I want to be prepared. I want to get stuck on something. I need some different streams of income to make sure that myself and my family and my kids are, are safe for the future. All right. So, Anthony, being in the um, IT industry, I'm guessing you love math. Well, I'm down. Let's go. <laughs> All right. So, okay. You, so, underwriting. Have you done Yeah, let's go. Fantastic. I've been 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 doing some of the napkins. I've been looking at that uh, that that big sheet uh, that this has been floating around. Uh, that's awesome. I haven't dug into that one yet. I've been trying to do some mm -hmm. underwriting just based on uh, properties I see on the market. Um, just get a feel for it. I've been diving into uh, a billion YouTube videos, uh, a lot of calls. Uh, mine always uh, blowing up <laughs> with a lot of new information, which is awesome. Um, so yeah, the markets I'm looking for are definitely the, the landlord uh, friendly ones. So if I'm not mistaken, that's uh, Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, Florida, uh, Georgia. So it doesn't really matter too much to me um, as long as it's, it's something that's viable. All right. Sounds good. All right. So if you need help with underwriting, Anthony's your guy. Anthony, there's an underwriting class um, mm -hmm. at, was it 5 p.m.? 8 p.m., right? Eastern time. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I'm thinking Pacific. Um, yes, with Alex Lovely. And I can yep, shoot um, 
I, I, I got to watch the replays of those because that's in the middle of the night for me. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Yep. Well, but I'll, I'll definitely join these uh, in, in a couple, uh, yeah, maybe next week or so when, I, when I'm not so busy with these uh, times. So I can actually get some sleep and then I switch around. Because I do, I, I, most of my work I do in, in Asia. So I'm all over the place in time zones. So <laughs> yeah, watch the records and have your questions and get ready for the next one you can ask it for in live. Uh, yeah, it's really great. Yeah, exactly. That sounds good. All right. Thanks, Anthony. Let's go. Yeah, thank to, you. Let's go to Mike K. Hi, Mike. Oh, you're you're on mute. Or can you hear me now? Yes. Oh, okay. Um, uh, it's basically me and my wife. We are a, a strong team, but we are very new. Uh, we say strong because uh, we had this ambition uh, for, for, for some years now. We kept dreaming of having like a, an investment property, but our dreams were much lower at that time. But after going through the, uh, the seminar with uh, Grant Cardone, I think our dreams are much bigger, but we are new and we are starting. Uh, background wise, my wife, uh, she's, uh, she's good in management. She's actually a manager, organizing, building teams and things like that. She's very skilled. Uh, myself, I'm a, a statistician, so I work with numbers, analysis and so forth. So, so doing the deals or analyzing deals, I would say that would be my strength. And naturally, I'm good at that. That's my full-time job, actually, to work with analysis and research. So I'm very excited. And uh, I've done some napkin deals and trying to assess which one is a good deal, a bad deal, and things like that. I think that would be my strength. And with my wife as a team member, I think she is very good at managing and building teams. So we're still very new, but we are very happy to be part of this community and ready to go. Our markets that we are looking at at the moment, since we're starting, uh, is North Carolina, Pennsylvania, and Ohio. And us ourselves, we live in Maryland, but we, We've looked at Maryland, it doesn't seem to be a good market for us. Fantastic. I know um, a few people here are looking into North Carolina, Mike. So make sure that you have your phone number up on the screen so that we can connect, uh, connect with you or contact you. Okay. All right, excellent. So we're gonna move on to, let's do Joanna Zane. Hi, Joanna. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm so glad to be in uh, to be part of this group. Uh, very nice meeting you all. Um, I am a new in this um, uh, this uh, business. I have been trying to get involved in a single family house. Um, every day I'm learning, uh, but now I see the opportunity of a uh, multi family uh, field, and it's really exciting. So, I the reason I wanted to get involved in this is because I want to show um, my kids. I am a mom of three kids. Uh, I want to show them that um, if you really uh, want hard enough and you want to try, you never give up and persistent enough and you will get your goal. Uh, this is the first reason <laughs> I really want to prove them. Uh, also, I wanted to show them that you, uh, we all have to put ourselves into uncomfortable um, situation to challenge ourselves, then we will grow. Um, so I um, very appreciate uh, everybody to, you know, put, um, put this group together. So uh, my strength is um, I can, um, I think I, I'm very good with math. <laughs> so I'm originally from China and I'm very analytical, um, almost like left brain. <laughs> I analyzed everything very, very detailed. And um, this is also my weakness. I think too much sometimes <laughs> before I move forward for action. I'm looking at uh, right now, uh, Florida market. I'm located in South Florida, uh, very close to Miami for Lauderdale area and also um, Georgia. 
uh, area. So, and uh, I'm right now working at home uh, for uh, export exporting business. We export lumbers and logs to um, uh, South Asian Southeast Asian countries. So, um, I'm here to um, to learn to network with everybody to grow. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Joanna. All right, let's hear it from David. You guys, we're going to limit it to two minutes. I'm sorry, but uh, just for the interest of time. All right, go ahead, David. Yep. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet everyone here. Um, I'm in the Vegas market. I'm a part of a mentorship program. So then I'm with a team here. So, uh, but I'm still also learning. So I'm uh, figuring out my, my role and just learning as much as I can. And I'm uh, super excited after coming back from the uh, uh, Grant Cardone's uh, um, conference, GrowthCon. So um, I'll be learning and, and doing probably boots on the ground or anything um, that I can do to add value to uh, the team here and, uh, and some deals. So nice to meet everybody and uh, hope to see you guys in the next call. Nice to meet you, David. David, can we have your phone number up so people can connect with you or your email? Oh, yes. Awesome. All right. Let's do Robert, Roberto. <laughs> All right. Um, am I unmuted there? Yes. OK, perfect. So hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Roberto Sainz, and I uh, am in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And I was born in uh, Chihuahua, Mexico. Um, so I've been here for most of my life. And uh, I am interested in the markets of uh, currently probably Dallas, Texas, or the North Richland Hills area, um, kind of in Fort Worth. Also very interested in, in uh, Tampa, Florida. Um, that the reason why is because I'm uh, also looking at the possibility of being there myself in the next uh, several months. So kind of looking at that as well as a possibility. Um, and my why is um, I want to be the absolute best provider that I can for my family also to repay, you know, my parents, the debt of having me, you know, in this country to begin with. I know, you know, they went through a lot and also, yeah, just to, to see how far I can go and, and see, um, the potential I can, you know, unlock in myself. And also my superpower is right now I have, uh, I have time. Um, I, uh, I currently do marketing for a, uh, a veterans and first responders uh, addiction and PTS uh, clinic, it, and it's actually down in uh, uh, San Antonio. So yeah, I'm proud to be, you know, working with with them and you know helping you know veterans and first responders and all of them. Um, but uh, I've gotten that to a point now where I have it pretty automated and, and, you know, pretty dialed in. So I have time to, to dedicate to this now and, and really, um, you know, go all in. I've been practicing underwriting deals and just kind of learning everything I need to. Um, and I keep practicing, Grant Cardone keeps talking about the, uh, the four quadrants and kind of practicing and underwriting deals with uh, that model and kind of uh, tweaking numbers. So you've come up with four or five different quadrants. So uh, as far as education level, that's where I'm at. And yeah, I'm, I'm super grateful for, for you, Rochelle and uh, Tarek and also Mike for, for having us on this call today and sharing all of your knowledge. So thank you. Thank you so much, Roberto. Actually, um, Shirley is also a veteran and that would be great. We, we share a connection there. Tarek is a veteran. We can do something um, with the veterans. I, hope, I, I think that's a, a great mission to tackle. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. They need a lot of help. So I'm, I'm, I'm very proud to, to be working with them. So if anyone needs help, so if you guys know anyone that, you know, needs, by the way, you know, help with addiction and PTS, um, reach out to me and, and uh, be happy to, to help you guys. It, the the uh, company is called Warrior's Heart. Warrior's Heart. Yes. Awesome. Mm. All right. So next up, thank you, Roberto. Let's um, have Grant thank on you. here. Hello everyone. Thank you for putting this on. Um, uh, well, so I live in Dallas or technically Plano, if you're familiar with the Dallas area, um, but I'm interested in pretty much all of Texas. Um, and let's see, my, 
my strong suit is definitely underwriting. I um, I went to college, got my degree in real estate and economics because I knew that real estate was where I wanted to be. That was the industry I wanted to work in. And um, so, yeah, I learned, learned the commercial real estate um, concepts and, you know, all the underwriting and everything in college. And then my, my last job, I was the underwriter for the company, but they really only wanted to focus on single family. And that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to get into the multifamily stuff. Um, so that's kind of what led me to this. And my why is definitely, you know, financial freedom and time freedom because I have kids and I want to be able to spend the most amount of time with them possible and give them, you know, the best life I can give. So that's my why. All right. Thank you, Grant. You guys, Grant took real estate and economics in, in college, so he might know a thing or two about real estate. So call him up, text him, bug him about underwriting or anything, anything that has to do with numbers. <laughs> awesome. All right. We'll have Shirley on. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Um, so like Rochelle stated, I am a veteran. I just retired a year ago and uh, I have moved from North Carolina to Tampa. So my um, market is of course, North Carolina because I lived there for 20 years, um, South Carolina and Georgia, but mainly North Carolina. Um, my why um, first and foremost, yes, is to build wealth and have financial freedom, but I really do have an affinity to share and pay it forward to other veterans and show them alternative ways to build wealth and not just go into the corporate sector after we leave the military. So that is very, very important for me to pass forward. Um, my superpowers, of course, is leadership. I'm very resourceful, very analytical. I love research too. And I'm boots on ground all day, every day. So if anybody needs help, um, yeah, that's it for me. Thank you. Thank you so much, Shirley. So Shirley's our girl in North Carolina, having lived there 20, for 20 years. I will be messaging you, Shirley. All right, Pilar, you're up. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Rochelle, Tarek, Mike. Um, I am getting so much from all y'all's love, um, Alex included. So thank you for these free ones. Um, I have recently moved four years ago to Utah, but I lived in LA um, and grew up in LA most of my life. And I come via Newport Beach. So I'm from the OC. Um, a, uh, close to 20 years in film production. So um, I know how to pivot. I'm quick, high pressure in, out. Like I'm not afraid of hard work. Um, I'm a people person. I just finished my master's this month. Um, thank God. So uh, in, ma in management and leadership. So my superpower is um, people, like relationships. I've also worked with the 1% back home in Newport Beach. So not afraid to talk to that type of clientele. Um, they were my families. I serviced them in a very small niche called private service professionals, where I manage their private homes, yachts, and whatever else, helicopters and stuff that they had. Um, just looking to, I'm a single mom of the twin boys that are special needs and trying to really just make a future for us. You know, I'm excited of this 18 to 24 month window. Um, if those guys are gonna be dumping billions of dollars, that is when someone asks Mike, I mean, aren't you afraid of building competitors? No, there's gonna be so many properties out there that these guys, it's just going to be a massive dump and I want to be ready and um, connecting with you guys through here is like, that's the step forward. So um, really trying to learn. I, 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 uh, I paid for grants, how to get into apartments. So really like my next master's, if you will, will be in multifamily housing. And I'm sort of just kind of going head in for the next six months, getting everything I can so I can be ready for that window and partnering with you guys. Uh, my superpower is people, relationships, and I have time. Um, uh, I do work in the C-suite, but I've dialed it in. I have a lot of autonomy. My markets are Utah, Colorado, Arizona, anywhere Rochelle made me think of that. Where can I get to in an hour? But um, I'm also, yeah, so just boots on the ground as well. If anybody's interested in Utah, I'm local, I'm here. So yeah. Awesome, thanks Pilar. 
Yeah. Doesn't she bring this some this energy that you want to be around with? I want her on my team. I like that kind of energy. <laughs> All right, so we're down to four people. So if you want to share, get your hand up there. All right, Don, you're up. Oh, hang on. Can't work out how to get my uh... <laughs> stop. A minute. Uh, and I'm on mute. Hang on. We can hear you, Don. We can hear you. Oh, you can. Oh, good. Sorry, I'm <laughs> trying. I'm on my phone. We, so I we see you. See we me, see you um, and hear thing. you. <laughs> <laughs> Super. Super. Well, hello, everybody. After that. Um, <laughs> Flawless introduction there. <laughs> uh, I'm Dawn. I, um, I've lived for the last 17 years in North San Diego uh, County, but clearly I'm not from San Diego. I'm from London originally, from London. Um, the reason that I'm here is because I want to upscale my um, estate portfolio. I've done single house dwellings before, um, but I'm currently in the middle of selling off the last of those to um, to really consolidate uh, capital at the moment. Um, and I, I've kept a couple that I'm renting out and they've served me well. But my purpose is that I want to set up a, a stream of residual incomes for retirement and then so that I can um, cover myself so that I can then give to children um, homeless kids basically I want to end my days working for children in charity that's my that's my end goal so it's um financial freedom and um just uh, a spread of portfolio um to look after myself and then others in the future my strengths I'm more of a numbers person than I am a written person word person but I'm I have I'm an entrepreneur I have been for 30 odd years now got a sales and marketing company and a skin line at the moment. And um, really my skills are creativity and problem solving and people, very good at being with people, get on well with people, um, like people, so that helps. Um, but problem solving and coming up with sort of creative ways around things is really probably my... Um, go, go ahead, Don, okay. I apologise. Is it... That's okay. Uh, that's really probably my, my, my biggest strengths. Um, but I do like the financial side of things. I'm very logical, I'm very logical at looking at things forward. I am very new to multifamily. So I really have no experience there. So thank you guys for allowing me to be here and um, sort of junk, jumping on your coattails and, and getting some learning. I'm going to the, I, I attended the virtual for the last Grant Cardone, but I'm going to the live in March. So I'm planning just to kind of, you know, build my knowledge and maybe even invest in um, somebody else's investment or the Cardone capital investment uh, so that I get some learning along the way um, with the view of, of wanting to sort of get into bigger, bigger endeavors as we move forward with people, of course. All so, right. Okay. Amazing, Don. Thank I think you so okay. much for sharing. Um, I was going to say problem, skill, problem solving skills is always welcome in any team. I think in any deal, there's always a problem that's going to come up for sure. So we'd love to have you on our team and everybody else is, I'm sure they say they share the same sentiment. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. So we're down to three people. We have Lara. Good morning, everyone. Lyra Bristol here. First of all, thank you, Mike, Rochelle, and Tarek for putting this together. Um, it's so nice to be part of a, a bigger community. Um, so I'm from California. Um, I have built my company. I currently um, uh, own 20 units of multifamily home. So that's where I want to stay. I've always known this is a, a multiplier. So that's where I, that's where I'm at. So where I'm at now is leveling up, um, you know, uh, so that's why I'm trying to connect with other, you know, communities to be able to get to that place. Um, I get that grant says, you can't do it alone. You gotta have people with you, right? So here's where I'm at. Uh, my biggest why is really to, of course, you know, build wealth for the family um, and really, uh, to exit my W-2, <laughs> to replace my my income uh, with, with this. And I love real estate. This is what I want to be as I grow old. 
Um, that's why I, I'm doing this. And um, let's see, superpower. Uh, I'm currently still working full time, uh, but most of the time I'm working from home. I go to the office maybe once or twice uh, a week, but I have all the time in the world because there's night and weekends. I can make that happen, whoever needs my help. So, um, and I guess leadership is uh, one of my um, strengths as well and problem solving. That's it, I'll keep it to that. Thank you. Thanks, Lyra. Lyra didn't mention this, but she runs a very profitable Airbnb out here in California. So um, if you have any questions about that, she's the girl to ask. Um, I would also like to mention, uh, Epi is a big part of this, uh, air, um, sorry, Q&A and um, networking event. So I would like to thank Epi. He was the one who put up the beautiful banner for everybody and he, he made this possible. It, it was actually his idea. So I'm just riding on his coattails. <laughs> All oh, right. Yes. Sorry about uh, that, Epi. Thank you, Epi. You're no, okay. Thanks. Thank you for that as well. It was... Uh, pretty much like a, a good way for us to connect. And this is the way, uh, we, because what Grant always says, like on a, uh, you need to, you need an R on a contact, right? And that R is relationship in order to turn into a contract. So making that relationship is the first thing that we need to make sure that we are always aiming for before we aim for anything, because a uh, business without a relationship is not a business. Mm -hmm. Epi, would you like to um, shout out what your market is? I know a few people here are in the same market as you are. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, as I mentioned, I'm from New York. Uh, I've lived in New York for 20 years, moved to Singapore about 10 years. So Singapore is my home. Now I'm in Europe right now, spending some time in Europe, uh, heading to Miami in March. So I'll be there in March for a real estate summit. Uh, my first physical event uh, after four years with uh, Cardone, I've been part of their uh, number of different type of events they've been doing with Cardone Ventures and, and Grant. Uh, my markets I've been focusing on right now, it's uh, pretty much I'm zooming in Orlando and Tampa. And there is a reason for it, uh, because I think knowing New Yorkers, New Yorkers love uh, Florida. And so I think Miami is a bit too overcrowded, but Orlando and, um, and, um, and Tampa fits that bill. I'm looking more also on the increased value of the property uh, that uh, we're looking for those deals. So yeah, those are my, my markets. My superpower is basically I'm a marketer. Uh, I'm a, a global marketer. Uh, I, I love creating stuff, uh, love networking. My network is quite wide from every part. I think I don't, I have uh, people in my network in every single country in, in the world. So I'm looking forward to connect with as many people as possible. Uh, but again, I also invest a lot of time in relationships. So relationship is the most important thing for me. So, All right. Thank you, Epi. Um, he, I think he's underselling himself, but he is actually, he, he, he runs a tech company called Crowdsourcing. So um, Epi has a lot of resources and I'm sure everybody would love to have him. And he's building his team as well. All right. And let's um, have... Joe, up on here. How's everybody doing? Uh, my name is Joseph Pico. I'm, right now, I'm currently living in Colorado. I'm originally from Hawaii. I was born and raised. Um, I am prior military also. I just mm -hmm. retired a year ago after 21 years. So shout out, Shirley. Um, but I ended up getting my degree in business management and how I got into real estate. I got into wholesaling first, started my own wholesaling company here in Colorado. Uh, did that for a little while and then ended up becoming a loan officer is which uh, what I currently do right now. Um, I ended up getting a lot of uh, skill sets. I uh, managed companies that were at least a thousand people. Um, so I have a lot of sh uh, leadership qualities uh, critical thinking, problem solving, um, and good with people and relationships, um, and very familiar with processes and procedures and stuff like that. So some of the markets that I am interested in is Colorado, Arizona, Florida, and Texas. Um, and then my why is, you know, the cash flow is nice, um, but I really want to, 
I want to start a legacy for my kids, you know, and my kids' kids, so that way I know that they will always be taken care of, right? Real estate's a good uh, vehicle for that. And then I also want to take the money to invest back into my community back home in Hawaii, because they do have a lot of, uh, you know, things that need to be solved, so. But it's great to be here, and thank you, everybody. All right, thank you so much, Joe. Thank you so much for your service. Um, I do have a lot of questions about mortgage, so I'm gonna give you a call. <laughs> All right, so let's have uh, Ciro. Ciro, is that how you say it? Hi, everyone, it's Ciro. Ciro. Yes, uh, we're from Peru, this is my daughter. Uh, we're, we really wanna, uh, thank you, Rochelle, uh, Tarek, uh, Mike, uh, Epi, and we're part of Alex's uh, group. And we are new uh, to real estate, but uh, uh, pretty much because we, at 2008, I lost two houses and pretty much was like, oh man, this is not possible. And I kind of got scared about real estate after that. Uh, but I always uh, loved real estate, and now with multifamily, it's it's just unbelievable the opportunity, and uh, we're ready to to get back. We're good on numbers. Uh, our superpowers, people. Uh, I'm a nurse. Uh, we really uh, connect with people, and we we like to help people. Uh, or 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 goal. Uh, pretty much is to be financial, in, um, uh, in, have the financial freedom and and help mm -hmm. people. Or our goal at you know is to open an orphanage in Peru. So hopefully, being financial, um, uh, having the financial freedom will will get us to that goal. Uh, we're also uh, building a small uh, hotel in Peru. Uh, and we're in the uh, half, uh, half the construction there. Uh, and, and thank you so much for the opportunity. Absolutely. Where, where in Peru are you building a hotel? Uh, it's in the, close to the uh, jungle. Uh, they call it a, uh, San Ramon. Mm -hmm. And it's a beautiful area. And, and it's our dream. And you know, ho hopefully, little by little, we'll, of come true yeah. yeah congratulations on that we would love to hear more about about your hotel once it's close to getting done thank you so much absolutely all right um miriam you're up next hi guys finally i got home <laughs> okay just on time so uh my name is miriam rolana i live in new york um my background is in construction and uh, i know how to build brand new houses and mensory so inside outside uh um uh, I do flips uh, since 2017. Uh, during the pandemic, I stopped a little bit, but I have two uh, new constructions that I have to have done for uh, next year. I'm excited about it, but um, I wanted to do it different for my kids because for me, I did so many mistakes, so much crying in the in the road too. Like uh, the, I think many people had done those kind of things, like so much mistakes. Um, I didn't know about coaching those kind of things. I knew that I need to find a coach, but I didn't know how, where, nothing. And I, um, I did by my own. I am a single mom raising two kids. My daughter is first year in college. My son, Pedro, a lot of people know, thanks God. <laughs> uh, he loves real estate. He's so confident, uh, half, half of him. <laughs> and um, I just wanted a legacy for them. I wanted the best for them. I wanted uh, that they be one day coach, uh, give back to the community, especially my community, the Hispanic community that um, we really don't know how to do it. And uh, I was one of the part of the people, thanks God. Uh, this year, our life changed a lot since we went, Pedro and I, to the Grand Cardon event. And he said, mom, you had to sign it for the uh, real estate club. I'm like, no, I'm scared, that's a lot of money. And he really begged me like, 
oh my God, since I went to sleep to wake up, he was like all the time annoying. Like I kind of did because he was like a little bit too much over me, like really. Thanks God was my best investment. Since then I met a lot of people. I met Mike, I met uh, Alex, I met so many people who are really nice. And I have to thank my Pedro because without him, I think I won't do anything of those things that I'm doing. He pushing me and he's still pushing me. He's still like um, asking me, like, did you do this, that? Like, I kind of push now, like, because uh, for me, um, this is kind of impossible. And I always going to thank God for this opportunity because um, sometimes you are in a spot that you feel like, this is too much for me. I don't know how to do it, where to start. And I have in my vision board since 2018, and I have downstairs in my main door uh, to remind me every day what I have to do it and accomplish. And this is, and this is like funny because I love a building that I used to cross by and I took a picture. I'm like, one day I want to have this one. So I'm like, really kind of impossible. How am I going to do it? But I just print it up and I put it in my vision board. Yeah. And this year, since 2018, that I have in my vision board, and now I kind of know the way how to do it. I'm like, oh my God. And everyone was laughing at me. Like, I'm like, one day I'm going to have one thing, a little one piece of this, but I, I, I really like it. And I don't know if people get familiar to the idea, like uh, you didn't know how to do it, but you really wanted to do it and uh, you don't know how. <laughs> <laughs> and um, that's me. I have huge dreams that make me scared that when I go to sleep, I kind of don't sleep well because I'm thinking like I have to do it. I need I need to open doors for my kids. I feel that I just I I wanted to they see it a different world, uh, not a world that I I grow. I, I wanted everything the best. I wanted they travel every time. I wanted that if they wanted to do something, they can be able to do it. And uh, you know, different. I just it's just me. Like I'm the different in the family. Like I'm the crazy one that has a huge dreams. People like my friend, my family said, but I I, I keep working. Those are great dreams, Mary. <laughs> yeah, and Thank even if so I used to be the only one who get up at four a.m. Um, know how to drive a truck, a trailer, um, know how to do a lot of crazy things. I have a micro background in cosmetology, just in case something like gets wrong, I have my license. I did my real estate license too, um, because uh, I, my English was so bad. After that, I think it get better. <laughs> um, Thank you so for sharing all that. I felt six times my license. Um, because I didn't understand a word. Like I really understand a little bit, but I didn't understand. I want my dictionary. They didn't allow me the dictionary. So I, I'm be forced to learn English a lot, a lot of grammar, a lot of things. I used to cry a lot. So like, this thing is not for me, but I wanted to do it. I just right. wanted to do it. And like- um, yeah, Language is a big challenge, you know, specifically for people who didn't like uh, born here in the US. Uh, so yeah, we, we feel the, I specifically feel you with the languages specifically. All right. But, so yeah. you guys, talk to Miriam if you if you have something going on, cosmetology, she said. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm very, also, she's an architect. Yeah, she's a great person. But I'm yeah, very good in uh, construction. And uh, a brand new construction is my main thing because uh, I used to do a lot of flips and so much problems like door to door. But now that I am doing a uh, brand new construction, it's like so easy. Like you have everything in place. You say, put it this, put it that. And like, I'm like, now, okay, this is a different world. But now in the, now that I am presented since July about like the big things, I'm like, oh my God, now what I had to do, sell all my stuff to keep going. So now I am here facing like what I had to do. Uh, then Pedro, he has huge, if I have a little crazy dreams, he has 10 times my like my dreams and like that made me scared and um and he gets so frustrated my main thing is like help my kids help my kids and um mm, yeah, good mom <laughs> that's my i would like to show before we end thank you so much Miriam. so please put your phone number up on there so that we know how to reach you and we know how to um share our crazy dreams with you as well so <laughs> 
So I would like to share before we end, um, Madison asked me to read this because he's not able to get on here. Um, so Madison Wade, he spoke earlier, he, he's the one with the crazy pink hair. Um, he is a veteran and a stay, stay at home dad. His personal why is his kids and he wants to provide financial freedom for them. Um, his special or superpower is that he is fluent in ASL. So uh, for those, he wants to do something for the deaf community. <clears throat> so this is one of his whys as well. So he is interested in Texas, which is his home state, Dallas and Austin, and he's familiar with North Carolina. So he is not strong in math, but he's more artistically, creatively, creatively and socially inclined. And that is Madison. So anybody else who would like to share before we end, we're at almost at the two hour mark, you guys. This is a, an amazing opportunity to connect with you. So nice to see everybody. Mike, huge thank you for getting on here and spending your afternoon with us and sharing with us um, your pitch deck. So if there's anybody, oh, Mike, yep. Michael Hawkins just raised his hand. Yep. Go ahead. Hi guys, Hi guys. Uh, Mike Hawkins here. I just want to say thank you to you, Rochelle and Tariq and, and Mike Bailey. You guys are truly an inspiration. Um, I just want to let everyone know I've been having a rough day going through my W-2. So listening to you guys and, and the positivity space has really encouraged me to go forward so i just want to you know thank you guys for all that you do and appreciation to all the new folks in multifamily um normally i don't get to this space but you know i really want to move from my w2 and, and i've you know I, I just i've been through a lot uh, with it in the last 20 years and I, I just hit a brick wall so i'm really counting on multifamily to get me out of this rut so uh, I really appreciate the community and appreciate everyone on here. So keep doing the great work and remember this is a family and, and that's what you guys have uh, been to me today. So thank you again and keep going. Thank you so much, Mike. Say hi to your beautiful children. And Ms. Dr. Holt is on here. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Holt, in between seeing your patients. So Dr. Holt, yes, thank you, everyone. Um, thanks, Rochelle. I, I really love your energy and everything that you bring into this. It's, it's just seeing your face every day brings so much joy that, you know, we all need to take advantage of. Even when Rochelle was sick, she was just under the weather not so long ago, but look how much energy she's bringing. Um, and you know what? Doing this with all this energy and everything shows how compassionate we are towards our family. I'm a physician and I'm also a real estate investor. Um, I'm invested in more than $1,200 at LP and um, just recently trying to, you know, get into the nitty gritty of how to do multifamily, which is why I joined the Grand Cardone um, Real Estate Investment Club. And my first, first person that I met in this journey is Michael Bailey. When I, so I, my practice is in Laredo. So I came to Houston, but before I came, I saw that he put up something on the website and he was talking about, you know, um, let's create something for people in, in the Houston metropolis. So the date that he put in there, I wasn't able to come because I was still working. So I reached out to him and I said, is it possible that before I leave Houston, can you guys see me? And you know, he has such a generous heart trying to help any new person in the business. He accommodated me and we had, he invited people within a very short period of time. And I was able to meet with us, you know, a group of people in Houston. And that kind of blew my mind. Like, oh my God, this guy, you know, and then I, I didn't realize how much of a legend he was until I met Alex. And when Alex started talking about him, I'm like, are you serious? The same Michael Bailey that I met in Houston, but he, he doesn't have to, to, to be pompous or downplay anybody. He carries everyone just as if we're, you know, we're on the same page. Even though he's way far ahead, he wants to hold our hand and he wants to bring us up. So I, I have a very huge appreciation for him. And that's why I said, you know what? 
even if I don't say anything, let me acknowledge Rochelle and let me acknowledge Michael Bailey. And for every one of you that are new, I just want you to know that you are in a very good um, family of investors, friends. We, you know, we go out beyond and above to help each other out so that nobody should feel left alone or being, uh, um, having a fear of, oh my God, I don't know anything, I'm just new. We all started somewhere. We all started from not knowing anything, but we accelerated our, our learning curve by being among other people. So don't hesitate to share your information, reach out to people, show your, your skills, and that's how you're gonna exceed in this game. So thank you very much for setting this up, Rochelle. That's well, all I have to say. Thank you so much. All right, you guys. So this has been an amazing Q&A networking event. Um, I learned so much about you guys. And any parting words from Mike? Do you want to say something? Why do, you, why do we want you on our team, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I actually, had, I had some things I was going to say, but after Dr. Holt went, I was like, I don't know. It's, I almost feel like crying. It's like, I did. Oh my it, God. <laughs> it's, uh, it feels special. I really appreciate that. That, uh, and that I, I think it just is the same for all of us really, you know, it's, you know, how we all have some, some skills. We all have some opportunities. We all have some experience and it just connecting and how can we help we can't help every single person but you know we just make the efforts and and when it works it works and and you just you know keep uh, persevering and showing up and you know being there for the people that come along you know i was gonna you know michael hawkins is a good example of somebody that's he shows up all the time every time and and i know that awesome things are going to be happening for him soon so absolutely all right well thank you so much for your time this is recorded so i will be sending it out to everybody um somebody just entered the room okay so anyway uh, i will be sending out the slides as well uh, once i get that from mike and the, if, for those who are interested to know about the macon uh georgia deal and the McCallum, which is in Dallas, it's a 441 unit uh, apartment deal that they just closed. Uh, reach out to me and I will send you all that information and we can get together and talk about it. All right, you guys have a wonderful awesome. rest of your day and I will be seeing you in the chats, in the groups and all, all the webinars and Zoom calls that we're gonna be having soon. <laughs> and have a great 2023. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Rochelle. Rochelle. Thanks, Derek. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Nice year. Year. Happy New Year. Yeah. Happy New Year. Yeah. Look forward to connecting. Thank you. Bye. Happy New Year. Bye. Bye. I'm glad I didn't leave early because I wouldn't have heard that message. So it's, it helps me to know just that I, maybe I'm doing sometimes the right thing. So I appreciate that. You're, you're muted. I can hear you, but you're mute here. I was, gonna say, I was gonna say it's always nice to know that you you actually made a difference to somebody and Mike truly you you have made such a difference to so many people that I, two hours won't be enough for us to to go over <laughs> no that's awesome so I'm glad to be here and uh and I, I I will it'll be cool that's why I asked you when you send me some of this I'll take a look back as well um I saw and heard some people I'd love to connect with more um that have an opportunity to work with i know grant has uh, connected with me and trying to follow up with him and uh joanne as well so looking forward to it and uh we'll be on this journey together fantastic big things are coming yeah <laughs> all right thank you thanks again mike yeah. bye bye thanks, bye